Hey there guys and welcome to a new tutorial from GenVFX. This is Gary here saying hello. And this is off the back of the last one. I had a discussion with someone today um, about uh, UV projection. And it was more about, well, where do you go from there? Because sometimes, you know, you've got a scene, you've got a camera, you've got to do what you want to do, but you basically, you want to do more. You're able to like paint stuff on different sides. And I mentioned it very, very briefly in the last one. But obviously, uh, this is basically the view looking down our camera. If we wanted to go wider with this, it would be a different kettle of fish. Uh, it wouldn't work as much as we would like it to do. So we need to fix that so it does work. And I, what I mean by that is we've got to bake the texture into the UV map on the object to actually create UVs and create texture so that we can actually maybe we pull the camera out and pull down. Because if you, if I take it, if you just let me just stop this and let's just put this and you can see that here on this object, this Projection, obviously that's not right on that side. Don't mind, that's not too visible. I can cope with that. I'm going around here like this. I'm coming around this side. But all of this here, there's nothing there. And you, in order to get that in there, you've got to paint that in. So let's discuss how you go about doing this. So basically, what we have to do is look at our object. And if we get into our shading menu here, let's just get rid of this timeline. We don't need that, but we do need this. So let's come here and look at our shader. Well, what we've got is we have our image, which has come, by the way, from Unsplash. It's uh, pitched by Grant Ritchie, and it's of a tower block. Very, very nice. Again, Unsplash, great. This guy, um, his full name is, and let me take a look. His full name is, ah, ha, ha, there we go. If I can lift this up, you should be able to see this one second. There you go. Grant Ritchie. Thank you, Grant. Really nice of you. And also, thank you, Unsplash. Again, wonderful. So the first thing we have to do is create UVs on this particular object. So what I'm going to do is go to the UV editor, and the moment we can just see an image. But as I say, there's no UVs. Now, you can see there's obviously a bunch of polys on there, which are quite useful. Let's go to object mode. And I'll also very quickly put on wireframe. Why not? So we can see that's what we've got to work with. So I'm going to go to edit mode right now. I'm going to go at three and then press A to select all of our polygons. And you can see there's kind of an unwrap there already, but it's not really conducive to what I particularly want. So I'm going to basically split this up into, into units. Now, first things first, I'm going to basically select some of these, uh, uh, select some of these edges to make them a seam. So I'm going to press Alt and click on that one. And I'm going to press Alt and Shift and click on a few more. So basically what I'm doing is I'm kind of creating the tile areas that I want to be polygon islands, because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna basically create seams. So if I just do this and this and this and this and this, those two objects aren't in fact connected, uh, but that doesn't matter. It's a nice way of doing things. And then if I just come up here and press Alt, whoops, go back one, and I'm gonna press uh, Shift and pick that one and that one. So that separates those off. And then very quickly, let's Alt, Shift, and select that one, and that one, and that one. And lastly, this one, and this one. So there you go, I've got all those seam areas corrected. And if I right click in here, I can just go in here, mark seam. There you go. Oh, there's another one there I've just missed. Let's just do that quickly and go mark seam. So we'll treat these all as individual islands when I do this, which is I go back to the polygon faces, I select all of them, and I go UV, and I go smart UV project, and do that. And there you go, that's now split them all into little islands, which is all very nice. And also we've got the word UV map up there. So that is essentially our UV map. So if we go here into our UV maps over here in the properties editor, you can see we've got a UV map there. Now, I want to put my textures, my image projected into this. So how do I do that? Well, okay, here we go. Basically, we create a new UV map and we will call it uh, UV project or project. So that's UV project and that now is what I will select as my main UV project, UV object I'm using. If you look up here, when I said there's UV and UV project, it's just a duplicate basically. It might as well be, but that's not the point. The point is that that is what we're gonna project our texture down, which we're currently projecting onto the object. We're gonna make it look at that UV map. What we're gonna do then is we're gonna basically bake that into the other UV map, which is this one here. I'll show you. It's, it's more sounds more complicated than it is, okay? 
So let's go back here and where that says UV map at the moment, we'll just change that to UV project. So that is now project. You noticed before it was kind of trying to force itself into our UVs that we've got, but we don't want to do that. When we put it into UV project, so UV project is now saying, right, okay, that is using our projection camera, which is the one all the way down here, that one there which is the Grant Ritchie spy because of course we used FSpy as well because FSpy is just superb. And now what we need to do is we need to say, right, I need to create a map that uses all of this malarkey that's on here, but I want it to be a single texture which goes into my UV, pro UV projection. Now the best thing is, first of all, is we have to have in here a different texture. We have to have a new texture to work with. Now I could, I could easily just go uh, Shift D and drop this, and then from here uh, go New. But I, I know, I know you can do that. But what I like to do is I like to do add it properly. So I'm going to go Shift A and go Texture, and then I go Image Texture. It's exactly the same, but it's clean, you know. And I'll be honest with you, I like clean. So we're going to click New. I'm going to change this to, and here's the thing. I'm going to change this to Building Emission or Building Bake, Building Bake, and I'm going to change that to 2048 and that to 2048 because that's the minimum I can cope with for a texture map. It probably would need to be bigger actually, but for the purposes of this, let's do it to make it a little bit quicker. Um, I'll do it to that. So this is blank, this alpha, it's not a 30 bit image, it will be tiled, but we can, it won't be tiled. What am I talking about? Um, so I'm going to go OK, and now that's got that texture in this objects shader. So don't worry about the fact that it's not connected to anything. In fact, if anything, that's exactly the point that you need to make sure is not the case because it doesn't want to be connected because we're creating based on the connection. So we have UV project, which is projecting this image onto the emission, into the emission. And what we have to do now is go to the UV maps and say, right, that's fine. But what I want to do is I want to move this and use it onto the UV map. So even though this is actually the one that's being used, we have to pick UV map. So the image is projected into the UV map area. So let's go back here, and we're going to change from EV to Cycles. And this is important because if you'll notice in the EV work menu down here in the rendering, you're missing the word bake. Baking, you cannot bake a texture in EV, but you can bake it in Cycles. So now we do that and you'll see the word bake has appeared. So I'm going to click on bake and it says there's a load of stuff down here, but what we're interested in right now is the bake type. Now combined means if you've got a an object which has got all these beautiful colors of specular and, and it's got normal maps in there and all this sort of stuff, combined will give you the finished look of that based on the renderer, but it will map it onto the UV workspace. Of course, that's not what we want. We want to pick just the texture that's going into the emission. So this is the shader that's here on this object and this is, the, this is basically the end result for it. So we go here and we change that to emit. And it changes a few things around. So what we're going to do is now, with all of this as it is, make sure we've got that fixed into the project, but that go into the UV map. We go back down, back up, sorry, to our renders, and we'll go right. It's the emission into building bake, bake, and then we'll watch and wait as the texture bake works. Now it won't take too long. Uh, we haven't got a huge amount of different geography, geometry there, geography. Ah, and there you go. And that's it. That's now rendered that image into our UV space. Let me go into um, uh, UV editing and so we can see here. So there you go. Now we've got the UV map and it's been projected onto our object. So the places where it will be going, not, where, where it goes and works. So you can see there's this section here, which is absolutely perfect. And this one here, which is pretty bang on. And then we've got the one here, which is that's correct. And so all these areas where it's actually really nice and there's some obviously which aren't right and that's the point that we're again trying to get at this one here you can see here this is all nice and clean and all in correct place this obviously now if i click on this to render well it doesn't look like there's anything on it at all because i've not clicked it properly there we go and um, you can see now that that is uh, cycles render, but it looks like it's still doing the UV projection, and that's because it is. So what we need to do is, because we've now gotten that sorted, first thing to do is save this as, uh, let's put a UV bake, um, let's call this texture make. There we go, and save that. 
And now we're going to go back to our shading view and I'm going to pop that into rendered so you can see what it looks like. And I'm going to go here and this building bank. Now this is actually sitting currently inside of Blender. Now if you want to, you can do uh, the external data and automatically pack things into the blend, which is great. You don't have to do that. You don't have to do that at all. What you can do instead is you can say, right, well, let's just, let's save this image so I can see it here. So I'll go to the hit and the burger and go image, save as, and they're going to point it into here, into the UV bake. And I'm just going to go building bake. And I'm going to put it underscore in building bake. I'm going to put emission because essentially it is for the emission. So let's stick the vector out of this and the color of this into the emission. And let's get rid of that. I don't want that now. Now, the reason why that suddenly looks wrong is because what it's still doing, if we go here, is using the UV project camera and it's using the UV project lack of texture space, texture vertices. Um, so what we need to do is just, uh, well, basically we just uh, turn this off, we delete it. And that now is the texture that is actually here. And just to prove that, if I just, I can rotate this. No, not, not in that angle, so let's do this, let's scale it. And you can see if I scale it, it's moving it around. It's just, it's just, just simply a UV texture on the top there, which means that we can go into this and I'll do it very quickly here in texture bank. Let me just save this as the end result. So let's call it texture and let's just call it texture. Uh, let's just call it end, end blend. Let's just delete all that End blend. And I say it's going into the emission. So if I just go into, let's just go into the paint texture here so you can see what I'm doing. So you can do just to prove, to prove a point. So if I get these both visible and let's have that texture paint and I'll make the radius a little bit smaller. If I do that, there you go. It's gone on there. Do that. Where's that gone? That's gone over there. Do that. That's gone there. And we can now work out where everything is in relation to each other and we can fix them. Just as Coldplay say, we will try to fix you. There you go. So that's that's how you do it. And then you can take this into Photoshop or Critter or into GIMP or into any other paint package because other paint packages do exist. And you can then use that to actually clone down your building from here. The clone tool in Blender is good, but I'll be honest with you, I would recommend doing this in a, in a paint package. And don't forget, if you're worried about where all your texture vertices go, just think about it in terms of the fact that you can say, right, well, I can see that, but I can't see the actual lines. You've got this saved. If you go UV and then we go, where are you? I think I'll do it this way. I think I've got to select everything and then go, that's it. And then go uh, UV, export UV layout. There you go. The rest of this stuff below. That's normally at the bottom of the list, but I have, um, I think it's magic UV. I'm always forgetting what it's called. No, that one. I have Magic UV in here, which is very, very useful. And obviously the text tools, which are also available. Uh, there's some really, really useful stuff, actually. I know a few people go, oh, I don't like the textures in, don't like doing all this stuff in Blender. But I can honestly say they are better than I thought they were. And I I still love the texture, map, the texture mapping stuff, uh, the UV mapping in Maya, but this is pretty damn tooting. Anyway, I'm going to leave you with that. Thank you very much for tuning in. As I say, it's quite a short one, uh, but uh, it's it's really good to know. It's really good to know. It's not one of those things that's... Better. The point that my friend pointed out to me was, well, that's definitely not obvious. And he's absolutely right. It's not obvious. So, But at least now you can do that. Anyway, I hope that's good. And I'll speak to you all soon. Take care, guys. Bye. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe. See you later.